Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you how you can upload a file, specifically an image with retrofit. However, that will be the same with any other type of file you want to upload. So very simple app. That's all I want to show you. We simply have a button which we can click and then we will upload a file to a server. I have written a little basic like sample server here in Ktor. You can get the source code of this in this video's description and run it if you have IntelliJ. However, you don't need this to follow through this tutorial. Like you need this to test if it works, but you can also just trust me that it works if you have some other kind of backend that accepts uh, some kind of files. So I will of course explain how all this works, but just to um, show you a little demo, here we have our main folder. So build resources main. That's the folder where I actually save the file that we upload right now. There is no file in there except for the XML file, but we want to upload an image file that we get from the assets folder in Android. And here in the app, if we then click upload image, go back, then we can see we actually have a new static folder images and my image here, a little image from me on stage. That is what I will upload here. You can upload anything you want, but just as a little demo that this works. Maybe as a little background so you actually understand how it works to upload a file using retrofit or using HTTP requests. That usually happens via so-called multi-part requests. So a multi-part request is well a request that consists of multiple parts, <laughs> surprise. Um, so you can see that here how we actually receive that server side. We first of all receive that multi-part request and then we kind of loop over each part of that. And there are different types of parts we can have here. We can either have a form item or a file item. There are some more, but not relevant for our needs here. A form item would be if we would want to actually send some uh, string data along with our file. So sometimes you want to also send a file name, sometimes you want to um, maybe also send some kind of JSON, JSON request or so to the server. Maybe if the user updated their profile and like the profile image is part of that update, then you want to basically upload a file, but also some kind of data, maybe the new username, the new, um, whatever, I don't know, <laughs> any any type of data you want to attach to that uh, file request, that would be a form item. So if you simply want to attach a string value. And then on the other side, we have a file item, which obviously consists of an actual file, so the actual bytes. And each part can then have a name. That's how we can actually check if um, this is the part that we think it is. So if this is the image part, that's how I call it, then we simply want to save that image here at this specific given path. So that's the server side of things here. Remember, it's a post request and uh, the endpoint is called slash file. Uh, that's why we need to make the request and send it to. Um, however, if you of course have a different type of API, uh, then this will of course differ. Let's switch back to Android Studio. And in here, I already added some dependencies, which you can also find in the source code in GitHub in this video's description. So we have our Compose dependency for, yeah, just VM models. I will have a very, very basic example here. Um, nothing special and also not following any <laughs> specific architectural patterns. And we of course have Retrofit, where we, which we'll basically use to make HTTP requests and to also upload the file to our Kator server. Cool. If you've done that and added these dependencies, we can actually jump into our um, into our root folder, because what we need to do is we first of all need to add a file that we want to upload. So the easiest way to do that is just to create an assets folder in which you can easily add some images. Of course, that could also come from the user selecting a file from their from their phone or so, but that's a little bit more difficult if you're dealing with like content URIs and stuff like that. To keep this as simple as possible here for this tutorial, I will actually use the assets folder, which we need to create. So we need to go to project. And in our main source set here, open this, right click and we create a new directory and we call this assets. We can already select what it suggests here. And then you pick any type of image you have and basically copy this into this assets folder. I'll call it image.jpg. And if we open this here, there you go. There's our beautiful image. As I said, you can pick any type of file. You can can also be a text file or whatever you like. And the next step then is to actually create our retrofit interface. So I will switch back to the Android tab. And in here, I will create a new file called file API, select interface. 
And all you want to do, uh, all you want to have in here is one single function that is used to upload our image. So that will be a suspend function, upload image. And since that's kind of a special function here, since it uploads a file and it doesn't just make a request, we need to annotate this with multi-part. That's exactly what I explained, that we basically are able to attach multiple different parts to our request. And these parts can either be, as I said, a string value or um, just a file that we want to attach. In this example, we only attach a file, but I will also quickly show you how it would um, how it would work if you actually want to attach a string value as well. Here, for the parameters of this function, we need to annotate each parameter with part. So that is how we how we tell Retrofit this is one part of our multi-part request. And here in this case, this would simply be the image that we want to attach, and that is of uh, of type multi-part body dot part. That's the format we actually need to use here. This function doesn't need to return anything um, since the API also doesn't return anything, keeping this as simple as possible. And then in a companion object here, I will simply have a, a global singleton instance of this API. So val instance by lazy. And here we can simply use our retrofit builder, retrofit.builder. Set the base URL, and here you of course need to use the base URL of your API. Um, for me, it is HTTP, um, I guess pretty much my local IP address, which is this one. You can find this out by either typing IP config in your CMD if you're on Windows, or if you're on macOS, you can go to your Wi Fi here and go to like settings or so. And then it will show you that IP of your local machine where the server is running. Of course, only if you're running your server locally. And then we can simply call build and create. And we can import create here. And what is the issue here? Um, probably some issues with create. Let's just specify our file API. Oh yeah, of course, because we didn't specify that before. But that way it's fine. We have our global instance and what I want to do is I want to simply create a very basic repository, um, file repository or so, which will make use of that retrofit instance. So that will have a suspend function, upload image, and this will take the file that we actually want to upload. So we first of all, will actually need to read that image from our assets folder and actually save it in a file. And we will do that in our um, cache directory on Android that each app has. And then we will take this and attach it to this function to finally upload it. And here we can simply return a try and cache block and to catch um, actually IO exceptions. We could print the stack trace. And yeah, it's also a question if you actually want to return this. You could, for example, return a boolean, whether this request was successful or not. So here we could return false. But in this video, I won't do anything with that information. We also want to catch HTTP exceptions. So if the server answers with a non-successful response, we can also print this and also return false. And in the try block, we can use our file API that instance that upload image. And now we need to actually attach this multi-part body part. How do we do that? It's actually very simple if you have a file, like a file in this format, since we can simply say multi-part body dot part um, dot create form data. That is the function we want. And you can see there are two different overload versions of this. On the one hand, we have a name and a value. That would be if you would want to attach a form data in form of like just a string. So for example, if you would do a normal request, that is what would be done. So you would have a name, how we can actually identify that specific part. And you have a value, which is, for example, the file name. It could also be some kind of JSON body or so that the server then deserializes and stuff like that. However, since we want to attach a file here, we will use the second overload, which will take a string, a file name, and a request body. First of all, the name of this will be image. That is how the server will identify that this is actually the image it should save on, yeah, on its local file system. The file name will be file.name. 
And the request body, we can simply get that by using an extension function from file that as request body. And if you would again, just have multiple parameters here for your upload image function, that would also um, take some kind of other, other data or so. So you would simply attach a string or so, then you would simply give this function more parameters, also annotate these with part, and then also, yeah, kind of create these with this, with this way of doing it. After that, we can return true and we are good for our file repository. As a next step, I like to have a little view model. Nothing special here, just create a file view model, for example. And yeah, I will just directly create an instance of our repository in here, like this. In an actual app, you would use dependency injection for that, something like Dagger Hilt or so, and eject an instance of this, but I want to keep this as simple as possible here. And then we can say function upload image, pass the file, and here we launch a curtain in view model scope. Since our function from the repository is a suspend function, we need this. And here we can simply say repository dot upload file uh, upload image and we pass our file. That's it. That's the function we will call from the UI. So that's the last step we actually need to do here in our main activity. Let's have an instance of our view model using our compose view model initialize function. <laughs> we want to create a file view model. And then we simply have a box here. Let's say modifier fill max size, and it will work the same way in XML. Then it will simply create a button or so, and then use an on click listener. I, I don't do anything else here, just in compose. So you can also just follow if you're using XML. And we can say content alignment center. So we have a centered button, which we'll put in here. Cool. So we have an on click listener here for this button. And we want to give it a little text. The text will be upload image. Now the on click listener is the interesting part because here we actually want to read our file, our image from our assets folder, save it in a file instance and basically save it on a file in our cache directory. And then we can use that to actually upload it to our server. So how will this work? We first of all want to create a file like this. That first of all needs a parent. So where we want to actually save this file, that will be our cache directory. And we need to do this here in the activity since that requires the context. Usually I wouldn't do this stuff in the activity or in the, in the, on the UI layer, since that's clearly data related stuff. Um, but again, I do this for simplicity. In an actual app, I would have some separate class that gets access to the application context, which you could inject with Aggerhield or so and then do the stuff there in the data layer. But I think for the sake of simplicity, simplicity, this is totally fine here. And the child, that will be the file name. I will just hard code this here, myimage.jpg. If you would do this dynamically, you would also need to kind of find out the extension of the image you, the user maybe picked or so, or whatever you want to upload. We want to create this file. So file that create new file. And we basically now just want to take our file from the assets folder and copy it to this file we just created. Since that's currently just an empty file, there are no bytes in this file. So what we can do is we can say file.outputstream.use. Use is basically just a, a utility function of Kotlin that will automatically close that stream when, when it finished. And in here we can say assets, that's how we access our assets folder, that open image.jpg, that's the name we actually used when we saved our image in the assets folder. If you chose something different, you of course need to change this. And we can say that copy to our output stream. So the output stream from our file. So that way we just copy our assets file to the output stream of our file. So in the end into our file. And then all we need to do here is we need to say view model, upload image, and we pass our file. And that should be it for the activity. One more little thing we need is internet permission in manifest. So uses permission internet, something people like to forget, me included. <laughs> and in here we want uses clear text traffic being set to true since I don't have um, 
HTTP SEO from my API. We need to set this to true so the app will kind of support and not break if there is just an HTTP URL and not HTTPS. However, I think that's it. If we launch this and I will actually go to my backend and say uh, and delete that image so you can actually see that there is a new image uploaded. So there is no more image. And here we are. This is the new newly launched app. If we click upload image and go to our backend, can we see it? Maybe we need to refresh. Not sure if I actually, if it recognized that click. Now it did. And it looks like there is a new folder, static images, my image, and we can open this and there it is. So everything is working perfectly fine. So again, if you want to also try this out, simply clone this repository here of the server, um, launch it in IntelliJ. That's what you would need to install if you don't have it. And then you can also just try this out at home. But the general goal of this video was just that you understand how it works to upload a file, that you understand multi-part requests because um, yeah, that's typically the way that is done. So uh, that was it for uploading a file with Retrofit. If you also want to learn how you can download a file with Retrofit, then let me know that down below using a simple comment and maybe I also do a video about that. Have an amazing day and rest of the week. See you in the next video. Bye bye.